thousand bodies remain buried there? Yes. And they walk around there. What? Oh my god, she's touching it! And his wife killed and scalped there. Things follow me. Like, I guess you don't know that. Things follow me, Chris. The way you said that was so scary. <laughs> of a little girl along the bridge while we heard the drums. Well, see, I mean, that's making a lot more sense because if you're saying that a 14-year-old girl had passed, people are, or 12, and then people are seeing the figure of a girl, and we're under the bridge and hear what sounds like a young girl screaming. It's really sad. It feels so weird about real stuff. Yeah. Like it's it's fun when it's like, oh, but like, it's like weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, to know that people have actually died out there is really sad. I don't know because we would have... We went down that way, we would have seen it. I'm sweaty. <laughs> that is the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced in my whole 24 years on the space. Well now I year. touched it. I thought maybe we yeah, could mom, take it. You, what? Because have I don't believe, I just don't one? believe in demons. No mom, and... you take that thing and, and you're done. Oh. Yeah, okay. a, a spirit is attached. You're Let's see. You. <laughs> yeah, you're really gonna do this? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> Everything. YouTube? Yeah. Um. Okay. We'll yeah, find out. We'll just, we'll, we'll just see what happens. Do you think I should? Absolutely. What we need to do is crush these TikTokers that are trashing all these school buildings. <laughs> what? Have you heard about this? I don't go on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Crazy they are right like now. demolishing schools. They're ripping like paper towel dispensers, soap dispensers. Sink. Wait, they're docu Sink. documenting Chicken. it? They're like documenting destroying things? They're destroying bathrooms. Yeah. And filming it? Yeah. It's a viral TikTok challenge is damaging our schools. You're looking at a school bathroom stall that has been vandalized with toilet paper rolled all over the place. The kids are destroying the bathroom. This soap dispenser is ripped off the wall. This toilet was covered in ketchup. It's national. Students record themselves damaging and destroying school bathrooms. They're doing it for the TikTok views. We closed down in the high school all of our bathrooms. Oh. Somebody needs to squash whatever this influencer is from TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> this, this took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> Prosecute them. 
Because, I mean, they are like destroying school buildings. I'm gonna need some more context. I'm gonna need squash. Let's do this. That's what this video becomes. Yeah, why not? From a couple of my teachers, every time someone asks to go to the bathroom, they're like, don't steal a soap dispenser. You gotta remember, whatever you put on social media will stay there forever. Watching TikTok. It looks like grandma's ready to go. Grandma, are you coming ghost hunting with us? Huh? Are you coming ghost hunting with us? Um. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever felt something haunted in this house? In this house, no. In my house, in uh, my other house, I did the mobile home. What happened? I just felt like uh, Hyde was there, right at the front door. Her ex-husband. Quite a while. I sang your ex-husband. Yeah. What was he doing? He oh, just the one that he's passed. So you're saying hit the ghost of your of Hyde, who's passed. Right. Oh, what do you think she meant? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, just, I thought she meant I just kind of felt, life. I don't know if it was a ghost. I just kind of felt his presence right at the front door. Oh, you haven't felt anything here? No. No, I haven't. <laughs> it's still up. <laughs> I'm so scared. Do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Where's the Morgan? He's up in her room. 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 <laughs> Do you want my full backstory of how the ghost got here? You brought the ghost here? One of them. Are you really scared? <gasps> I'm I will be when it's night and we're at a place I'm not right now. And nighttime scares me. I'll save you, Chris. They say okay, so <laughs> please. Okay. In relation to a recent TikTok trend where students take things like soap dispensers. Seems like a weird trend. Did they just run out of dance moves? <laughs> <laughs> so now they kicked off three urinals off the walls today. So they're standing at the urinals and they're ripping off these sensors. There's 277 volts back there. So they could I don't I don't wish harm on anybody, but I hope the little shit that's taking a piss with his <laughs> screwdriver that touching that, you know where that electricity is gonna go? Right in his dick. Oh yeah, and we're gonna find out real quick who it is. <laughs> Punishment will be harsh and swift. That's a video! Oh my god. Wow. Nurse, 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 what happened? I don't know, I was in science class and my penis caught the fire. <laughs> this is why I moved here. <laughs> Family. Family. The mom knocks on the door every... Uh, Mom wow. And every time she knocks like this while she's opening the door, and I'm like, no, what's the point of knocking if you're gonna open the door while you're knocking? This is what happens when you move back in with mom. Hey, we're giving you a place to stay. You have a roof over your head. <laughs> yeah, family. Everyone's yeah. gonna be like, wow, you really declined. You're looking back at home. <laughs> hey. So do you guys think us moving here was a mistake or do you think it was a good idea? <laughs> Do you think us moving here was a mistake? No, oh no, I think it's great. No. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. I love it. It was meant to be. We really like it. Bummer. Going to your guys' house in California is amazing. It was great. But I think California is just very toxic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wow, they're coming in hot with TV. Yes. Well, it's where all these TikTokers who are destroying your bathrooms originate. And it's national. Not <laughs> <laughs> just Jerry Cruz's district. That electricity is going to exit. Okay. I'm. I know it's stop. We'll find out real quick. Do you know what they're talking about, Grandma? No. <laughs> You're right, it was on the news. But because of what? Wait, hold on. Wait, what happened? What happened? Cheeseman Park's been closed down because there's just too much crazy stuff going on right there. Right. Well, but that's not where we're going, but what is that? If you go there at night, it's very weird. People say there's spirits walking through it. I've heard it's haunted, <clears throat> but I haven't, you know, I've been there, what, 20 times doing photo shoots? There's not stuff. once did I feel <clears throat> anything. But any it's always been during the day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you go there at night. <laughs> I, I don't know. What did you find? 
This is all about Cheeseman Park and all these ghosts. What does it say? So... Hey you guys, how's it going tonight? So I wanted to hop on here and tell you guys a quick little scary story. It is that time of year for ghost stories about our Colorado. And it turns out, Denver's Capitol Hill neighborhood has a very dark past. Denver. Have you guys ever heard of Cheeseman Park? With Cheeseman Park, it's Denver's biggest traditional haunted spot. The sun shines over the hills of Cheeseman Park. Well, it's a very popular park in downtown Denver. The leaves fall and people go about their lives. Some, maybe most, without knowing what's just a few feet underneath. In the mid-1800s, Cheeseman Park wasn't a park at all. They're completely unaware that they may be walking or sitting. I'm sitting in Cheeseman Park. Right upon the final resting place of one of the thousands of souls who was buried here. So they built a park on top of the burial ground? Mm-hmm. Look at man. And the park used to be a cemetery. Mount Prospect Cemetery, until the city changed its mind and moved most of the bodies to new homes. Most of the bodies. 2,000 bodies remain buried there? Yes, and they walk around there at night. Did you know that there are over 5,000 bodies beneath the park? So. The history is dark, but indisputable. The park is popular for playing frisbee. Four skeletons were found in 2010, nearly 40 more in 2008. Yoga. When it rains, the density of the bones can actually cause them to rise to the surface. Dog walking. And if you do go there with your dog and your dog starts digging, watch closely because probably they'll come up with a tibia or a femur or some body part. But make no mistake, this is a cemetery. Family members were buried on top of each other and then just houses were built on top of them. The movie Poltergeist is also said to have connection to or be loosely based on Cheeseman Park. All of this can be your master bedroom suite, that can be your view. Interesting. The uh, city uh, tr tried to push people into moving bodies out. They hired a contractor, a McGovern, to move the unclaimed bodies to other places. To move the remaining bodies to Riverside Cemetery, four miles to the north of here. And paid him a dollar or so for each body that he moved. They paid him per casket, so what he did, he was a clever guy. He started cutting off arms. Chopped up some of the bodies into multiple pieces. Putting the arms in a casket, moving that casket, and making money. They would move one finger or one toe and charge you for moving a whole body. So instead of getting a dollar, you would get several dollars per body. So he basically mutilated the bodies. It's said that there can be found a woman holding her severed head in her hands. Her head was taken in one place, likely the Riverside Cemetery, while her body was left in Cheeseman. They were supposed to hire another contractor to move the rest of the bodies, and they couldn't find anyone in time. The plans for the park were ready to begin, so they actually just left them under the park. They simply covered up whoever remained and built the park we see today. Children have been seen playing in the park during the night before they mysteriously disappear, and a woman is said to be singing to herself before she too suddenly vanishes. The spirits of these looted, forgotten, sometimes desecrated bodies continue to make their presence known here in Cheeseman Park. This isn't just a few pissed off spirits we're dealing with. The most important bodies were moved first. Those who could afford began to transfer the bodies, but many could not. So the people left underneath the park are criminals and just bad people. The first man buried was hanged for murder. Just on the edge of that cemetery, now park, sits this mansion. Built in the late 1800s, home to a woman who had four different husbands all die while married to her. Wait a second, you're telling me this guy is walking around right there. <laughs> I don't think that that's like a real photo. I think well, somebody took that picture. No, someone <laughs> spent 12 hours photoshopping that picture. Sorry. It says that if you lay on the ground at night, you'll fill them. <laughs> okay. Anyways, we'll do that another time. So, these bodies are also underneath the Botanical Gardens, which is right next door. They say that it's one of the most beautiful gardens in the U.S., and the reason being is they have the best compost you could ever ask for. Human bodies. The corpse flower is in full bloom, and with the bloom, of course, comes the nasty smell, described as rotting flesh. Oh, yummy. We encourage you to go out into the gardens and look for a lovely spot to enjoy your meal. We'll go 
go there next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Um, well, speaking of, uh, Morgan, you uh, said you were going <laughs> to... <laughs> said you were going to give us a breakdown oh, of where we're going? Is that what you would like? <laughs> <laughs> well, should we go to a more movie area to talk? Is your room still haunted? Angie, stick your tongue out if I'm going to be alone forever. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! I don't think so. I cleansed it. I still hear noises though at night, like when she's gone. Like even last night, she was at Austin and Stacy's, and you just hear it crack up there and you think, why? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that was so scary. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true a actually. Stop! Did you guys hire somebody to do no, this? No, I'm really scared. Stop! <laughs> Wait, what the? F what is that? Did you guys hire somebody? Okay, those are house settling noises. <laughs> that? <laughs> that? Yeah, try to take Oliver down to that I bathroom. I think that you're mistaking that with Third Bridge, which is where we're actually going. Yeah. Well, okay, Third Bridge. Okay, so let's go to the basement and you can explain. Right. Are you just gonna have Morgan explain to you down there? For a while, I actually did believe you were lying. But now, after everything that I've seen, you are being haunted by a legitimate spirit. This is an earthbound spirit. He is full black, and I believe he's from the 1800s, around that period. Is there enough light down here, Chris? A little dark. He looks similar to like a cowboy. He has this long, long trench coat. He has a hat. Very specific type of person, and indeed. Ten speeds, and this is a test shot. Oh, yeah, I can't testing. believe we're actually doing this. Testing, <laughs> test shot, <laughs> when you're ready. Okay, so tell us where we're going. <laughs> well, I actually think this will be good for you to know because we now all live in this county where this has all happened. <laughs> so, once you said you wanted to go here, I was like, oh no, like maybe I've played this up <laughs> to be a little more than it is. But today I got all nervous because I was like, I don't really have much to say besides this is where like teenagers go to have their little first oh, date no. kikis. But- <laughs> We're going <laughs> no. to Third Bridge. What is up fam, welcome to another haunted adventure. Hello everyone and welcome back to A Haunting in Colorado. So tonight's adventure is one of the most famous thought to be paranormal spots in Colorado. Uh, it's a really haunted place here in Colorado. And these stories almost give you chills. We are at one of the most haunted locations. Ghost Bridge, otherwise known as the infamous Third Bridge. Third Bridge. Third Bridge. Third Bridge is said to be haunted. But anyway, this Third Bridge is uh, it's apparently haunted. Dude, slow down. What the frick is happening? Uh, it's been haunted since uh, around the 1860s, I think. A site of a massacre. It is said that people can see a woman walking in a white gown along the bridge. Oh, it's dead. <sighs> like the massacre victims. So anyway, what I'm doing now... Are you here somewhere, little girl? Wait, bro! Wait, we're out of here. Oh, we out! We, out. we out, fam! Third bridge. It is kind of an urban legend that is a popular hot spot for the teenagers, at least it used to be. I think people stopped going there because a few years ago, there was a car of teenagers that their car swerved off the road, lit on fire, and they all died. And ever since, I haven't really heard of people going there just because it was so tragic, like people in our school district died. So, I started doing some research today on what actually happened there. So back in the day, before all of these massive houses and schools and King Supers were built, this is where, well not here, not where mom and dad live, this is like the suburb suburb, but out there. <laughs> so it's a little more rural. Every house has like six, seven acres of land, so they're like far in between houses. You don't have phone service out there. It's very rural. So, back in the 1860s, the Arapaho and the Cheyenne tribes lived there because they followed the herds of buffaloes there. 
So this is where they all peacefully resided. They were happy living their lives. They all had wife and kids. They would go off in the day, hunt their hunties and go home. Then some governor who sucked, his name was Governor Evans, decided that he did not like these people being there. So, I feel like Kendall Ray right now. I know, wow, you're so good at this. I'm that like, was the longest consecutive thing I've ever said. Like, they're scripting, like, this is so good. I'm like freaking out. There's like a teleprompter in my brain. Did you call Kendall Ray for tips? There are actually a lot of victims in this case. No, but I- She lives here, right? We should invite her. She probably knows all about it. So this is where I don't know anything about it other than when I was in high school and trying to hook up with girls, we would take them there because there That's was no service. Saying. And when they get scared, they're more likely to like make out with us. Yeah, I will say I went on like three dates to Third See? Bridge to have like a kiki because you feel so dangerous because you're like 16, someone just got their license, you're going out into the rural wilderness, it's no scary. Service. Anyway, back to Governor Evans and why he sucks. So, he decided that he did not want these Native Americans there. He formed this whole plan and he was trying to get his troops to go kill the Native Americans. So he needs to make them look bad in some way so that his troops have a reason to go and do this. So there's this guy that was kind of a hot shot over there and his name was Nathan Hungate? Daniel Hungate? Nathan, H Nathan Hungate, I think. <laughs> if any of this could be fact checked, I did a Google search. So Daniel Hungate and Governor Evans didn't really get along. But he went out with his hired help. He like went out with this guy to go hunt his buffaloes and stuff. And then he noticed that his cabin where he lived had smoke coming up through it. So he went back to his house, raced on his little horse back to his home, and his wife and his two children had been killed and scalped there. So. This is a lot. <laughs> like, people have so scalped, much. sorry. Probably the most, the worst way you could die. People and, have scalped. This is the middle of nowhere. How is all of this going down? Then they found Nathan Hungate with his body, like two miles from the house with 80 bullets in it. So Governor Evans had a motive to kill Daniel Hungate, right? So this started the Sand Creek Massacre. So of course, he blames it on the Indians. Which was when this governor decided that they were gonna kill all the Native Americans that lived out there. Governor Evans says, we must go and kill these Native Americans. Look what they have done to our men. So it's actually really sad. It's like a big part of history in rural Colorado because they killed all these innocent people that were just living their life there for no reason besides the fact that they were like white assholes. This is where our ancestors fell on November 29th, 1864. Their flesh and their, their blood is a part of the soil. 700 U.S. soldiers charged. Shubington's troops came in and swept through the village. Cheyenne Chief Black Kettle prominently flew a U.S. flag and a truce flag. They were ignored. And isn't this area, well, I don't want to dox your family, but isn't, isn't this, what, Arapaho? Another fun fact is this is located in Arapaho County, and Arapaho is the tribe that was there. It's on the Arapaho Albert County line, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we live in a well. Yeah, we live in Arapaho County, no, fine, which know. is a massive county. Yeah. Today marks 154 years since a tragic day in Colorado's history. And then they were framed for this Hungate murder, and then they were murdered themselves. So it's really sad. More than 200 Cheyenne and Arapaho villagers were killed by U.S. soldiers in southern Colorado in what's become known as the Sand Creek Massacre. This was quite a ways away from Third Bridge. People think that maybe they came back to this specific place because maybe they camped out there the longest. They knew this place, it was home to them. Third Bridge is said to be haunted and the legend is long as the horizon is distant. So what, what's like the legend, like, oh, if you go there? That this bridge is actually haunted. So people started going there because they say that you can see. So I always heard like you go there to see the horses and hear the drums, but I didn't know why. You can hear drums sometimes beating at night. You can kind of hear them floating across the wind out there. You can hear, right? Yeah. 
Supposedly you could hear drums in this area. The first time I went there, I was like, oh my God, somebody's literally just banging on a Native American drum, like, like just going at it. <laughs> so the horses are Mr. Hugay and his helping hand riding their horses and they say that you can see the spirits. People say that like they get handprints on their car and then their cars break down, which is scary because those kids, their car broke down and they all unfortunately pass away. Okay. But then also, oh so there's, uh... and then you can hear like the native drums. What, what do you hear? You can hear it when I stick my... Okay, yeah. Chris, roll your window down and stick your head out the window. You can hear drums? When you stick your head out the window, yeah. If you guys can hear the drums going out there right now, we are right on the other side of the bridge here. Oh, it stopped. No, it keeps going. It sounds like a, like a, like a war. Like a Native American war drum beat. Hot chills. If anybody knows what this drum beat is, let me know down in the bottom in the comments. Which has been debunked because they say it's an oil well or an oil rig. Sounds like there's beating of a drum, but there's a pump jack not far from here. People just say that scary stuff has happened out there. And it's like so far out and there's so very little people that live out there. And since like the 1980s, there's been 20 plus deaths out there. The tragedies that have happened here are widely reported and well known. A man was found strangled to death. We had a murder right there. A man even murdered his family on this bridge. So, it's because people go out there looking for trouble. People go out there looking for trouble, which is why I stopped going there, because the last time I went there was with some guy, and I was riding around in his little stupid Jeep, and there was a person following us home that kept getting really close to us, and then they would turn off their headlights, and you can't see anyone because you're in the middle of nowhere, halfway to Kansas. And then I was like, yeah, we're never going back. And you don't have phone service, so you can't call for help. There's all these abandoned houses that were the houses of the people who once resided there. But it's really sad when you think about the fact that this Sand Creek Massacre, all these innocent people were murdered for literally no reason other than some white dude wanted to show that he was like big old man. Well, is it bad that, like, is this disrespectful or bad karma? Because I'm just a big old white man that wants to show the creepy spookies. <laughs> <laughs> like, <it was> so <laughs> like, I'm not trying to piss off. Well, I go there. Well, now that I know, we go there in like the respect of the Hungates. Okay. Yeah. And so the Hungate was the one that the fam he came back and his family were scalped. Yes, and then that's what started the whole thing. Mean, I can't. War. This like what? Uh, I didn't know about that. <laughs> like I heard from like teenagers well, being like, "Oh my god, it's well, so scary." Well. There. I I mean, but Listen. nowadays, it's like a teenager kiki spot. Yeah. Like I said, you go there with your girlfriend to get her scared and you guys make out in terror. Like, that's what it's become. So I'm just saying, I'm not- girlfriends that you took there? Yeah, we would always take our friends. Like, we would always go in like groups there and then the couples would like separate and go under the Yeah, bridge. like one person's in the trunk, like. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> well, that's why, like, and that's probably what's bad is most people are detached from the story. They're just like, it's spooky. Why is somebody in the trunk? Well, you know, when you want to like separate to do your own thing, like there's a front seat, a middle seat. <laughs> <laughs> Colorado is weird. I'm telling you, the creepy shit that goes down here, just, and just when I was starting to feel safe out here, like I was like, oh, it's safe in Colorado. I start to hear all these tragic stories and I'm like, maybe people are crazier here. There's just less people, like it's less populated. I think there's crazy people everywhere, but there has been a lot of definite tragedies, like the Chris Watts murder. And now to that unnerving moment. Chris Watts explains why he put the body of his family into oil tanks. Like a lot of really sad stuff happens here. It's almost like scary to go out in public because you're like, what's really going on? Uh, no, I was just excited to go out in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. I was, I was definitely more afraid in Colorado, or I was more afraid in California, but I think you're more likely to get murdered here. Just because it's there's less going on. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. And there's more places to like hide. You have demon um, experiences in the past. What do you think this is on Chris's arm? He woke up with a scratch on his arm. I think Chris probably knocked himself on a counter. <laughs> <laughs> but, have you ever had a ghost experience? Not really, and I've always wanted to see a ghost, but. 
well. Maybe tonight's the night. There are a lot of like Reddit forums, people saying that they went here and crazy stuff actually happens. So regardless of the history, stuff does happen out there. Is grandma gonna come? She wouldn't hear him coming. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> she would feel the essence. She can't hear the beat of the drum. I, I mean. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, here we go. But first, every good ghost hunting expedition begins with tacos. Have you ever been to Third Bridge? Yes. <gasps> you have? Yeah. What, did you and dad go on a date? He was trying to make out with you? Morgan, <laughs> we went, what, three years ago? Why did you go? Mm -hmm. It was close to Halloween and we wanted to see what was there. It was really dark. And did you see anything? No. I heard some noises. They can physically make noises. You don't have to be a psychic or a healer for that to happen to you. Why did we have to walk so far, Morgan? Do you remember? Well, it's a bridge. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess we should go find it in the light first. We know where it is. So you know that you get there because there's literally, like there's not an address. There's three bridges, so you have to count. Like one, two, three, you're is there. That what it was? I don't remember. I remember we got out and we walked a long way. Well, should we go? Yep. For the most part, ghosts are not trying to cause you harm. It's just that they need energy to survive, and you're the only energy source that they can find. Honestly, do you think we're going to see anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I would have forgotten. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Why 100%? Because that I things follow me. For sure. Like, I guess you don't know that. Things follow me, Chris. You're not going to go out. The way you said that was so scary. <laughs> Don't things follow me? Like what? Everything? Like ghosts, demons, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Did telling you guys know, sorry, that the annoying orange is back? No! <laughs> Mom, are you sure you're okay? Uh -huh. Wait, you have to come. Okay. You're afraid to have a little ghosty ghost? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm so the most keep up with you with my walking. <laughs> you can stay in the car. <laughs> we'll miss you, Grandma. Well, I'll be seeing you. In the afterlife. Shame! <gasps> what? What? We're gonna Too die. Late. We're gonna die. I'm not dying. Me either. I might. Uh, <laughs> I refuse to die until I have at least I one mean, accountant I boyfriend. You <laughs> gotta know what real life is about. Goals. <laughs> what did you say, Grandma? I'm happy that he's going to be doing this. Aww. <laughs> Aww. That's so nice. Thank you. I hope I don't die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is like out there. Is that my name? Um, what the fuck? Oh, it's oh my god! It's We're gonna see something. Like some shit's gonna happen. Shane, come on, please don't say that. Oh, is it that. too late to back out? Okay. Shane, what? Do you really think something bad's gonna happen? Well, I don't want to freak everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> back to my hometown, so. Why is that a meltdown? Yeah, what was your meltdown? Because you mo you're moving back to your hometown, it's like going backwards. It's what all the country singers write about. <laughs> I can't wait for the new country music songs to come out. My electric car attacked my ass when my wife left me, my horse died. <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> 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 Family. 